it feels more realistic that, or it feels more authentic that I got it, um, the bestseller before we told people to like strategically buy at a certain time. So that was really cool. And then the other lesson I've learned, which I might have to repeat because some people are still coming on, is like, okay, well, Amazon sold out, but that's kind of cool. Totally. You know, I have a question. Can we still get it on Amazon? I'd prefer to go to Amazon and get it. I mean, not that's my mom. To, because to, I like I'm, to buy it through them. I think they're the better. Figure out if they can, how soon they can restock it. So don't worry. It will be back on, on radar. It's just sort of outside of the hula hoop of what we can control like tonight. So that's why Barnes and Noble, there's a lot of other, you know, I know Amazon is really kind of like most people are like 80% of sales are through Amazon statistically, but there are a lot of other places to get it. So I, I, put, a, I put a link in the chat. Okay. Well, maybe I'll add, um, I could add a chapter to my book, next book, be flexible. Cause that's what I learned today. Um, you know, when the stakes are high and you put so much into something, there's, you know, even with mystery school classes that I teach, there's always resistance. And I, this is not a mystery school yeah. class, but it's like, there was so much resist. Like I was like, oh my gosh, I was so sad that I might, thought I did the wrong thing um, because I wanted to get this result and I got it. And then Barnes and Noble, now I can authentically really be like, hey, like I got what I wanted, the three bestsellers and people liking the book and finding the book. I wanted that. Um, but now I can, it's realistic to be like, hey, everybody in about a month, Amazon, the copies are back and then keep promoting it in a way that's fresh and not like stale. So both, both things that I thought weren't good turned out to be really good. That's what I learned. So every, you can always turn um, obstacles into like gold. <laughs> and when I actually cared, like, like the stakes were high for me today and it, really worked out. Like if we had bestseller by 11, 11, I think I sent it to Ling, who's my assistant. She has her hands up like this at 11, 11, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you everybody for coming, first of all, but I'm here. So, much with you. so we'll get started if that's all right with everybody. Um, and people can still trickle in and I'm sure they will. And the way this works, is we all are here to celebrate Erin because she has accomplished something really amazing, which most people will never accomplish in their life, which is writing a book and actually publishing it. And most people feel like I should write a book or someone will say, you should write a book, but to actually get it done is a lot of work and a lot of effort. Heather can attest to that as the editor and Erin can attest to that. So um, I'm just, I just, you know, say thank you so much for both of, both of you sticking with this. It's been a long project and the book came out amazing. I'm April O'Leary. I'm the owner of O'Leary Publishing and had the pleasure of working with Erin throughout this whole project. And I wanted to introduce Heather, who most of you probably already know, um, but maybe not in this capacity because you might have met her in other ways. So Heather is our head editor. She's been with us since 2019. So we've published almost 40 titles together so far. And she is the person who is cheerleading the author along the way, helping them get the ideas down. And in this case with this book, it was such a team effort. Um, Heather and Erin worked so well together. And I just say like, they're just, um, I think, energetically <laughs> coping gold in a way that was supposed to co-create this book. Um, and so I wanted to just give Heather a chance to share a little bit about the process of what it takes to write a book. Uh, Heather actually wrote a book called Manuscript Magic, which is about how to write a book. Um, but she uses those tools to help her authors. And Erin, before we bring you on, I just want to also say congratulations on number one in two categories so far. Erin actually achieved a ranking that most books never will get to, which is top 3,000 on Amazon, which may sound like, well, it's in the top 3,000 on Amazon. Yes, that means it's 0.001% of any books top selling. So because Amazon has millions and millions of books. So to be able to achieve that, most people won't achieve under 20,000, and even that would be 0.01% of books. So congratulations on that. That's huge. And you can see why Amazon's like, sorry, we didn't plan accordingly. We didn't know who this author was and we should have had more books. <laughs> so Heather, can I ask you to, to just um, 
tell us what your work was like on this book and how you worked with Aaron. And if you two want to talk back and forth and share about your process, I'm fine to just sit on the sidelines for now. Well, thank you. It, this is an absolute honor to have worked with Erin. Um, she is a really big deal in the world that she lives in and the things that she does. And the first thing she said to me is, I want to write a book because I want to be an even bigger deal or a really big deal because she didn't think she was a big deal so that I can reach more people. Because in person, you know, she can reach hundreds, maybe thousands of people. But with a book, she can reach millions of people. And that was the first thing she said. And it was funny because we're both Leos. So she gets this, I get this. And she's like, I want to be a really big deal. I was like, well, let's do it, <laughs> right? Like how many people <laughs> come to you and say that, right? So the, the book began, actually, I'm from California, although I live in Florida, near where Erin is from. And Erin is actually my mother's a guide in the mystery school, which is kind of cool. And the book actually began at my parents' ranch in California two years ago. Erin came down and we spent the day together and we mapped out the whole book. And we were ready to go and we were gonna have it done in like three or four months. And a book like this took us two years. And it's not a long book. You can read it in less than two hours. I reread it again today after I was reading all the amazing reviews. And so one of the things that I really loved about working with Erin is she is amazing, incredible, you know, international instructor, but also so humble. And she lives what she wrote about because the biggest thing in her book is know thyself. And she knows herself and she knows what her superpowers are. And she knows how to find people who do what she can't do. And that's where I came in because she had all these ideas and she had this vision, but she didn't know what to do with it. And so together we were able to create that. And it took us two years, right? To write like 20,000 words, which isn't that much. But the reason is, is because these keys are so powerful, yet they're also really simple. And the thing that happened today that was just the most incredible, when I read the reviews, I knew we had achieved what you wanted to achieve because what you wanted to do was write a book that could reach anyone, someone who's beginning in spirituality or metaphysics, has never even heard of metaphysics, but also people who've been doing it for 10 or 15 or 20 years. And I read reviews today by your colleagues who have done this for 15 or 20 years, who said how much they got out of your book. And the book wasn't written for them, right? It was written for someone who is at the beginning and who's a seeker and who needs these keys because those people who wrote those reviews, they have these keys, but you were able to present them in a way that still helped everyone, no matter their level, their, their experience, their path, get something out of the book that could help them in their progression in their spiritual life. And that to me is just the most incredible thing. So thank you, Erin, for trusting me um, because sometimes I was bossy but you always appreciated it. And you know, the thing that I love about Erin that she said, is she was, she thanked me for my fire and my patience. And for her to be able to bring that out of me that I can be both fiery and patient at the same time is only because we were connected to something higher and we were channeling what needed to come to the world so that can, people can live the best life. And that's really what I believe that we did together. So thank you, Erin, for that. I am so proud of this book. It's my favorite cover ever. I mean, it's like a magical cover. The inside is incredible. And you told us what you wanted and we worked for two years to make it happen and we did it and we achieved it. I think even more than we thought. So yay to you. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Heather, um, for all your work. And really, um, I'm so grateful that to have Heather in my life, I would say to death to us part. She can't leave me ever. Um, and even, maybe and even Heather that. solidifies maybe. that, you know, I need to send her like a bigger diamond in the mail or something. I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, when we first talked about this book, Erin, I want you to share about the book that you, that really inspired you when you were young and why it did inspire you and how it helped to shape how this book is presented to readers. Yes, that book is the reason why this book came to be. And first of all, I do want to say, Heather, oh my gosh, you were there by my side the whole time. And yes, I took forever because I was kind of pro procrastinating, but it's like, I don't think I would have been ready to um, have the time to promote it until now. So kind of, we had to sort of like stretch it out, but you really were patient with me and I, did a lot of voice texts. All the people who work with me know you have to endure some voice texts. Not the easiest. She did a lot of listening to voice texts. So, and we had so, like the beginning at the ranch was so powerful. Um, but yeah, let me talk about 
So thank you so much. I mean, you basically. You're so welcome. And can I say one more thing about you, Erin? One of the things that I think is important to share, and I know you're very open about everything, but as amazing and incredible as Erin is, part of the reason it took so long is because she was afraid it wasn't good enough. And she wanted it to be the absolute best it could be. And I think that's really important because that shows your humanness. And I think no matter what we do, no matter what we've achieved, we always have a little bit of that. And I think it's important for everyone to understand that because I know how many people here look up to you, right? You're their guide, you're their teacher. And I think it's important for them to know that. So I hope it's okay that I share that. Yeah, no, everybody knows I'm an open book. And that's why people are drawn to me because I don't act like I'm perfect or anything like that. (laughs) And I didn't want a mediocre product. I mean, we're, there's a whole chapter on not being mediocre and there's a chapter on being royal. So the stakes were pretty high. You know, it is a big deal to put yourself out there. Um, I won't even cook a meal for somebody, but that's not my strength. I'm not really good at cooking, but here's my book. I put it on the altar for you guys all to uh, decide if you like it or not. And that's so, here we go, you know? Um, The book, okay, so my mom's on the call, raise your hand. I gotta honor my parents and my dad, Bob. Okay, just wanted to honor my parents. Okay, so my mom, I had that very difficult time in college. It's in the book. I mean, I was, I don't talk about it because I don't want people to think oh, I'm trying to get sympathy or something. That's the only reason I don't talk about it all the time. But you'll read it in the book. Something happened. I got depressed. And I went home for uh, Thanksgiving. And I was just like looking through my mom's laundry room. And she has like, a, she had books in there. And I found a book called Life is a Spiritual Experience, Metaphysics Made Practical by Paul. And I wish I had, should have brought it so you could see it, but it's like very 1970s, like a hippie looking guy doing a meditation on the cover. And it's just simple. It's small. It's blue and white on the cover. And in the middle, I was able to read it. It had all these keys, like as above, so below your thoughts, create your world, the law of attraction, you know, stuff like that before it was in, I guess, in the 2000s or whatever, all these laws. And I, I started to apply them because I really was depressed. Like I was so depressed. I had never been depressed before. And I was creating negative, um, a negative world based on my thoughts. And I couldn't get out of it because my thoughts would create, um, reasons for me to kind of underscore the fact that I believe that things weren't going well. So things aren't going well. I'm creating that even more reason to be depressed, you know, like, so I kept on going down and down and down. And, um, Grace was the book and the book was grace. Cause I really, that's how I got in the spiritual path. I never really was into it before I was raised Catholic and, but I wasn't, I was more of like an activist, like an angry kind of environmental activist type, um, trying to heal the world through anger and protest and not from the inner. And so I applied what I learned and it worked. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm studying environmental studies and philosophy in college. This is probably not where I'm going to go. Why would, why would I study anything else, but how to create my own reality? I just learned how to create my own reality consciously. So then I got into metaphysics, but that's why, um, and I did went on different paths until I found the mystery school, which is the one that I find the most effective and clean and pure and where I want to dedicate my life to that. But the book, the reason why I wanted to write a book is because of that book. Cause it helped me. It completely is the reason that I changed my life. And I always see it as grace. Like somebody has to come in and help somebody. If you're depressed, like how does that, how does that come in? Is it another person? Sometimes is it a book? In my case, it was a book. And so my book is also for those who are struggling and have made a prayer, but for angels don't just come down with wings and hand you things they do it through humans or a book and so that's why I got inspired to do the book and I also wanted it to be the same format because let's face it I was talking to April about this the other day on the interview I'm from the MTV generation it's like bloom 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 and then she was mentioning well now everybody's like the Instagram TikTok generation where it's like 15 seconds and so I actually I don't know if I diag- have any sort of diagnosis or I'm just a product of my generation but I need like to have pictures and quotes and everything. And so you'll see in my book, there's pictures and quotes and even Heather's like, Aaron, Aaron, there's only a couple pages that just have words. Is that okay? Cause she laid it out. The layout part was my favorite. When I saw the layout part, I was like, this is exactly what I wanted. This is so pretty. It's beautiful. It looks like a, the good witch, um, fairy godmothers writing the titles, like, um, 
own your triggers or whatever, find your buttons. It's like a negative thing. It's a thing that people don't want to find, but it's like the fairy godmother writing it. So you're going to be like, okay, I'll find my triggers. If you say so, I'll find them. So that's one of, that's the inspiration is life is a spiritual experience, but really life is a physical experience and we're already spiritual masters. So it's, Paul wasn't very right in his book, but yeah. Well, that's the 1970s version we've evolved and you have better knowledge now. So you're sharing that. This is the Paul 2.0. I don't know. But we're <laughs> gonna, I want to share, I'm going to screen share your cover. Oh, I love it went through a lot of work and uh, thought in how to put together this beautiful cover. And I want you to talk about some of the elements that you chose and why you chose it. And we can read the back cover copy if you want. Um, some of you maybe scrolled through on Amazon, which is the front and the back cover there, but I'm going to put it up on full screen here. So can everyone see it? Yeah. So Erin, do you want to talk about the front cover and yeah. What it means to you and what it, you know, how it came about. Yeah. Well, I, I actually bought a book when I was in my more new agey phase, which was a long time before I found the mystery school. I found a book on like letters from the archangels and who knows how legit it was, if it was really letters from the archangels or just shoddy channel material, but it really helped me. And it, it did have purple and gold. And actually that that's one of the covers I gave as a, um, is a part of the uh, inspiration, but yeah, I just wanted it to be very magical and joyous. Uh, purple to me is a, the color of transformation and transmutation. Um, it's about magic. It's about, yeah, using a key to open the door. The key has a crown on it. It looks like a crown. Um, so I really wanted the key to be in the lock. I think we're going to do a key just by itself, but I wanted it to show kind of like you're opening another realm by opening the book and even the light that's coming through the hole like from the back side of the door that was a feature that we talked about because opening the door you're you know there's light on the other side of it and that's what you're aiming towards um and i think that the font that was chosen that jessica chose for the um title and the back cover and some of that is so elegant and really represents you I think it's uh, really, I mean, to me, I think it just came out in such a beautiful way. Again, yeah. And it's like, there is hope and it does. I mean, that's what I wanted. I want people, even if they're not going to sign up for the path that I represent that to find this and help them get out of their, whatever they're in. And there is hope and the um, writing that is kind of the fairy godmother type writing there. And then I happened to wear purple, which I got my colors done. And they said purple wasn't a good color for me, which I think everybody thinks it is. Like people have been saying it does look good, but I'm glad that I wore purple too, because then it matches it in my picture. It looks perfect. It's almost like she planned it, but maybe you did unconsciously plan it. I don't know. It looks perfect though. And so- um, the back cover, some of that um, open the door to a life of purpose and passion. We really wanted to incorporate inclusive language that was accessible to everyone because I know that various paths have various um, types of words and things that feel a bit exclusive. And so we wanted to really keep the door wide open so that anyone who's seeking can find and feel connected from the outside of the cover. Because it's a spiritual shortcut, seven simple keys to unlock your potential. Just going to say, well, I don't want that. I don't want to unlock my potential. But we all do, right? Uh, oh, yeah. So I thought that was really um, so, and I love that it was keys and that we were able to incorporate keys. And uh, do you want to read the back cover copy? I always like to have off of that because I think it feels so good to hear it out loud. Do you want me to read it? Because my eyesight's yeah. like Did you not know? very good. I, I don't think I can read it because I lost you my to read it? Yeah, as soon as I turn like Heather, whatever, you want to read I get my age. Yeah. Heather's got a great reading voice. Let her do it. <laughs> yes, I'm glad to read it. I'm because I've spent a lot of time with it. <laughs> yeah. Open the door to a life of purpose and passion. Amidst the chaos of our earthly existence, imagine if a blueprint to boundless joy and success lay nestled within you. Dive into spiritual shortcuts to that embody. Yeah, my eyes aren't great either, but <laughs> to embark, oh, thank you. To embark on a transformative quest to your true self. 
use seven keys, some, some kind of keys, sorry. Oh, I know, you need your glasses on. Oh, I know, I do. To oh. unlock your genuine essence and your best vibrant life. Spiritual shortcuts is... <laughs> Spiritual shortcuts is not just about self-discovery. It is about remembering, removing the barriers that have held you back. Say goodbye to confusion and step confidently into a life where your dreams become reality. Embrace the light, shed the shadows, and let your true self emerge, radiant and free. The universe whispers your name. Are you ready to answer its call? Isn't that beautiful? I love that. And the thing that's just so wonderful is when you bring the team of the right people together with the right energy who are connected to something greater than ourselves, this comes through us, right? Because you can feel that's not that's not just human words, right? There's magic, right? There are angels in those words. Definitely angels helped with all of this. So yeah. I want to mention that the seven spiritual keys are so foundational. There are things like you were saying, as above, so below. And some of those things that when you grabbed that book and you had no experience with spirituality, spirituality and metaphysics at that point, you were able to say, oh my God, I could try that. So you were able to put that same energy in this book where those keys are simple keys that are accessible. So what's one of them that you want to give our party goers this evening. I'm not going to have you tell them everything because we want them to read their book when they get it. But what's one that comes to mind that you think everyone here needs to hear this one tonight? I know it's, there's so many, it's hard. First of all, I want to thank everybody for showing up. Um, I really appreciate it. Really. Like I've seen everybody who showed up, I'm looking and I'm, I'm noting and I'm appreciating that you took the time to come and honor me, uh, you know, honor the book. And if the book is for us, it's we, me, me is you. We're all the same. <laughs> it's a higher concept, but <laughs> we're all one. And so I actually did this for all of us anyway, but um, I just, I'm grateful for you also buying it um, really early in today and just following your intuition and just organically buying it when you did, that was really cool. So actually I have it open to the chapter on find your buttons because I thought, it, I think it's so funny that it looks like, um, cause I, I printed it out because I also haven't gotten the book yet, which I'm excited about, but it looks like, doesn't it look like a happy, even though it's something that we don't really want to do, it's like, find your buttons. It's going to be okay. <laughs> um, so your buttons, uh, the, the keys in here are about how to be authentic, how to be free how to realize that the things in life that hold you back are not external. That's basically the main thing. The key is within you and you are, you are the key. You are the one uh, responsible for how your reality plays out. Just like I found out when I was depressed and then I created a terrible reality for myself in college after my trauma, right? So one of the main keys is to start realizing if something bothers you, um, I mean, I was talking to April about this in the podcast recently, um, more than a 15 minutes, which is, uh, you know, if it's more than 15 minutes, it's from something from the past, it's yours. And so you want to work on clearing that up. Um, so example, somebody does something that would normally be offensive to most people. And you just say, Hey, that bothered me. You know, I wish that didn't happen. And then the person says they respond in whatever way. And then you move on with your life. Okay. That's a normal, healthy response. It's okay to kind of set your boundaries or like stand up for yourself. No problem with that. But now let's say you do that and you're still upset about it. You can't let it go. You need to talk to all your friends about it, or you're, you're ruminating. That means it's something from your past. So that's going to give you some freedom. And then that leads us into another chapter, um, you know, to find the button because the button there's illustrations in here too, that'll help you see what the buttons look like. I'm going to put it up right here. So oh, cool. Yeah. I'm so glad we have pictures. I made sure we have pictures. The picture? You want me to scroll to the buttons picture? Yeah. Whereas the guy has all the issues. That was a hard one to create. Yeah. So he's got all these issues. He's got an unhealed wound. He has a trigger. He's got um, 
leaky energy and a button. So those are the things that happened to him when he was a child or something. And he believes that that's the truth about the world. Now, the premise also in the book is that know thyself. We are at cause. We are divine beings. And everything around us is a mirror of basically what we believe. And so he's believing certain things about the world. And so he's going to have to draw those to him. So you see those buttons? So it's almost like he's begging for that situation to happen. It's like pushing, push my button, push it. So it's going to be a hook or a button or a magnet magnetics that um, attracts the things that we don't like in our life. And we keep doing it because we believe, we believe, we believe that that's what's um, actually real, but it's not. And so as soon as you go back and say, when is the first time that happened? Okay. You know, I'm 14. No, I think it happened earlier. I'm eight. No, maybe even earlier. I'm five. Okay. Somebody looked at me funny. I took it really the wrong way. I was speaking up and somebody got mad at me for speaking up. So now I'm afraid to speak up. So if I speak up, I'm going to attract somebody shutting me down. Example, whatever, you know, it could be anything. And so if we can identify that and be like, okay, that happened a long time ago. I'm still hooked on that. How can I let that go? So then enter the chapter on inner child. Well, you go back to the little person within you, like little Aaron. Okay, so you, somebody didn't respond in the way that you liked and it hurt you. That person probably wasn't trying to hurt you, um, but you took it the wrong way. Well, now that's that's okay, it happened, but do you need to replay that into your adult life? No. So here's an example, this picture here is how we treat our inner childs a lot of times. Like you messed up or, you did you I can't believe you did that, whatever it is. But if we can actually start um going back to when those things happen, first heal the part of you that got arrested development, that got stuck, heal that part and say, you know, I love you, even if you speak up and somebody makes fun of you or whatever it is, um, I'm still gonna be here for you. I'm not going to abandon you. Then that child starts to feel safe. And then your outer world will heal that button and you will not attract that issue again. Can we go to the Buddha of enlightenment picture? I mean, I'm giving all my good stuff, but I know you already bought it, so. You're not giving all the good stuff. Really, you want this one? No, that, one's cool too. that one's cool it's too. It's at the but... beginning. It's towards the beginning. I'm the Buddha's sorry, at the yeah, beginning. It's here. It's okay. Um, Heather probably knows it better than me too. I know, right? Yeah, the Buddha. So go down a little bit. The Buddha is the next <laughs> image. Go right down to, yeah, it's coming right this up. Yeah, really... I know it pretty well. <laughs> Heather does it really well. <laughs> Keep going. Almost there. You're almost there. Yeah. But the, yeah, the like if you start Heather, shooting... Heather actually has to memorize that. These, this is part of her job. She's been like, yeah. Right. He's yeah, coming up. He's coming better up. Than me, so oh, don't... I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm wrong. I've messed it up. Where's the Buddha? <laughs> you made a mistake and it's okay. <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> so like if you've healed enough of those buttons, then really, okay, so those buttons are why you're having this thing happen to you again. You might be like, gosh, I'm always being cheated on. But have you noticed other people aren't? Why are you the common denominator? You know, I'm always being shut down. When I try to talk, I'm trying to talk. And then all these people come in and interrupt me while I'm trying to talk. Well, you're the one who's being interrupted. Does other people have that problem? So you start to realize you have a belief in about the world. Oh, you have a belief about the world that is um, attracting the same stuff. And that's what I really am motivated to help people realize is like, let's get out of this Groundhog's Day. I mean, Groundhog's Day, he does get better. You know, he does figure it out, right? I mean, maybe this book can help people get out of Groundhog's Day quicker. You know, like not repeat the same day over and over again. So this is the Buddha at the Tree of Enlightenment. He has worked on all his issues. But you notice there's dark forces and the, the arrows cannot get in because he has no issues. So every he's going to be neutral to everything. So he has more energy to, well, basically wake up the world, do whatever he wants to do. So we want to be able to walk through the world without being stopped all the time by our triggers. But let's face it, we have triggers. And we're going to need to work on them. And so that's life right now for us. Okay. So how can we make that better? Make it a challenge. It's fun. 
it sucks at first. You're not going to like it when you find your triggers. Also, you're going to see yourself mirrored in other people. The things you don't like in other people are things that you do, be it a famous person that you just can't stand and you think about them all the time. They have qualities that you have. Sorry to say that's in the book. Um, so that's never fun. We don't like that, but don't you want to get better? Don't you want to not be upset about the outside world? I do. I have other things to do. I have books to write. I have interviews to go on. You know, I have life to live. Like I don't want to live the same day over and over again. So the mirrors, yeah. So there's a lot in there that's gonna, it's not gonna be fun. You're gonna feel like somebody's punching you in the face when you actually face yourself. And that's why it's called spiritual shortcuts. Shortcuts are not easy. They're hard. It's it's the harder way up the mountain. It's about facing yourself. It's not the the windy roundabout. It's going straight up. You're gonna have to face yourself. And when you do, you get points. You get, it's like Mario Brothers. If you're in, I mean, I'm dated. That's the only video game I ever got into. So everything's forever Mario Brothers for me. Where's Trevor? We have that we just- Well, and just speaking of speaking of interviews, and I'm going to put it on the chat here. I don't know if you have um, been able to share it yet, but Aaron was just on the podcast. We recorded last week and it launched today. So yes. on that- there, you can actually listen to it straight out, up online, or there are links so you could hear it on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, you can hear Aaron talking about the book, and we covered a lot of things that we're not even covering in here tonight, so you'll get a whole nother view of Aaron in the book. We had such a great time doing that. Um, and April, I wanted the to share, of, I wanted the to share the podcast. Ahead, Make sure you tell the name of the podcast. The I'm Booked Podcast. So, and Aaron was episode 73. And I said to Aaron at the end, is 73 like any sort of a meaningful number to you? And what you said was? It's in the tree of life, which we're number one in Kabbalah. <laughs> we're together, it's 10. And when you study Kabbalah, which most of you actually have studied Kabbalah, thank you for um, coming on. Let me just look at everybody again. Very grateful for all of you. Everybody here, almost everybody's done Kabbalah. It's um, it's the beginning of the tree of life, which is uh, ten represents the physical Malkut, the physical world that we manifest as creators, and then at the top is Keter, which is um one. So, it's both uh, Alpha and Omega. It's the beginning and the end. And I just ended a uh, thirty six people quest up the tree of life a week before. And one of our main things that we set out to do is have a tang tangible, measurable result of the nine months. And of course, my book drops one week after. So it just proves the magic of the tree of life. And 10 goes all the way up and becomes one. And then one, um, ten, uh, one at Keter. And then 10 starts over again because you're now at the new tree that you've ascended. And I just want to jump in on the Kabbalah because... The whole reason that that April and I connected in 2019 was because I did my first Kabbalah tree in 2018 to 19. And one of the things I put on my vision board was stepping fully into my purpose. And during that time, I had five people come to me who wanted me to edit books, one of them being Christine Elwert, who is on this call, who wrote a Kabbalah book about Kabbalah because the Make Tree of Life gave it to her. So at the end, I met at the end of the tree, I met April. So April and I only came together because of Kabbalah. So it's like full circle, right? And that's amazing. And also, Christine, hello, raise your hand. Um, she wrote Awaken to Joy about Kabbalah. And that's how I knew that I wanted to work with Heather because your book was so awesome. And the way that they did this, this whole um promotion at the end, I was in your group and I was really aware of it. And I was made aware. I think I didn't, I didn't, wasn't able to make your party, but I was definitely aware of your book. And, and I thought, okay. And then I knew Heather and I are just like fire. <laughs> and so I was like, that's the only one person I'm publishing a book with. So, and in April, of course, I mean, well, and I want, so I want to give a little bit of um, tooting Erin um, Torn as well, because she really worked so hard. And also to Ling, who is on here, where are you? I saw you. So um, she, the two of them together, really, we got on a couple different calls and we've been emailing back and forth and they really were so amazing putting together 
um, just the energy behind launching a book, because it's not just about writing a book. It's how do we get people together? How do we make people aware that this book's available? How can we get excited about it? Because anyone can write a book and it can sit on the shelf and no one can read it. But Erin had, because of all of this work that she did behind the scenes, and today we were going back and forth and she was like, I don't know, I feel like I didn't do something and I should have waited. I said, patience, I said, your work is worthy of respect and it has been, you put so much love and energy and there's no way it cannot succeed, it, it, basically. And you knew that anyways, you didn't need me to tell you that. I reminded you what you already knew. But we were able to, and I'm going to share a couple of things here. She got a number one new release in philosophy and Meta metaphysics. She also had, um, let's see, I'm going to just click through some of my things that I say that one. She had a number one bestseller in Kabbalah and mysticism, which is amazing. Um, she also had, and I want to show you this here, I screenshot this. Uh, she was in the top 3,000 in the books overall on Amazon, which is really an incredible feat. So congratulations for that, Erin. Um, additionally, she got so many amazing reviews, and I want to thank all of you. Um, I'm going to put up a couple. I don't know if any of these people are on tonight. Is Megan on tonight? Um, no, Megan is. Megan is currently doing an Enochian temple. There are some people who are missing because they are serving in a temple tonight, so. Okay. Well, so Megan, I wanted to thank her for this beautiful review. We have um, Carla. Is Carla on? I don't think so, but I think a lot of people had some conflicts, but I'm so glad they did the reviews and bought the book. That's amazing. And yeah, some of these reviews just blew me away. They were absolutely incredible. Thank you, Genevieve. Thank you, Genevieve. Um, and all of these are on the Amazon page. Um, Cyrus, I think, is on, and he has been very enthusiastic and helpful. Yeah, this I had to read this review like three times because I was like, this is the one that told me we did what we wanted to do. Like, this was like, yeah, we we did it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Does he want to read his review? Do you want to unmute and read your review? I think Osiris has a book in him somewhere. I do. I think he does. He's an excellent writer. Cyrus, do you want to read your review here in front of everybody? Can you guys hear me? We can. Perfectly. Okay. I would love to read it. And uh, thanks to everyone and this amazing team for putting this together. Uh, couldn't put it down. Total game changer. The book is incredible. Aaron Wallace's writing is direct, concise, relatable, practical, and uplifting. Spiritual Shortcuts is deeply personal and exceptionally useful. I'm a lifelong seeker who has studied many systems and traditions for unlocking human potential Never before have I found a single book that distills down so many big transformational ideas into a step-by-step -step guide for changing everything. This book dares you to consider what it would be like to profoundly know who you are, become resilient to the volatility of the world, and live an exceptional life that invites others to do the same. That's amazing. Incredible. I think you should be a professional book reviewer because that is like exceptionally well written. Thank you so much. Incredible. Yes, you have a book in you, Osiris. <laughs> I do. I hope I can talk to you guys later. <laughs> we would love it. You're, you're, um, yeah, your writing is beautiful, but you, you boiled it down as Heather said, so it's exactly what we're trying to do with this book. So thank you for seeing that and for writing that down. Um, uh, Erin is such an inspiration to all of us and she's watching her grow over the years has been fantastic and um, just perfectly timed. Thank you, Erin, for uh, blazing this trail with this great group. This Thanks. is so awesome. I'm ripe. I'm ripe now. <laughs> um, April, I just want to make sure that we recognize Lori Ann, who's also on the yes. call, um, wow. because she came in at the end when Erin and I were kind of stuck. Like we shared this with important people and they kind of told us there was a few more things we had to do and we're like, oh, bleep, what what do we do? And we gave it to Lori Ann and she helped us when we were both stuck. So Lori Ann, hey, raise your hand. She's a lawyer. She's she's like, I do this for a living. I look at words. Or, I don't know. Yeah, so she was really our savior at the end to take it up to like greatness. So thank you for that. That was so transformational for the book and for us. 
she helped us co connect the hermetic keys to the book. Um, yeah, we struggled with that, right? Because I really pushed Aaron and I said, you have to, you have seven chapters, you have seven keys, there are seven hermetic principles, you have to have them in here. It's the basis of the school that we're a part of. And Aaron, the humble Aaron that she is, is like, well, I'm not a teacher of hermetics. And I'm like, I don't care. You are a teacher of hermetics because you've been doing this for 20 years. So I really, really pushed her and she was really didn't want to step overstep her bounds. And Lorianne really helped us figure out how can we put it in here in an, an organic, authentic way, which I think for those of you who read it, you'll understand how important that is at the end of each chapter to have that little hermetic key. Right. Because we don't know which key is going to really hit someone and help them do the research and, and go on that path to find what they need for themselves. Yeah, that totally, I'm a big credit giver and definitely Heather pushed me to put the um, Hermetic Keys in and definitely Lori helped um, tie it together for sure. Yeah, thank you. I love well, I know um, we have so many people on here who all love and adore you, Erin, clearly. And for the last, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, we usually keep this to an hour because I know it's starts on the East Coast time. It's getting close to pajama time. And for you on the West Coast, maybe you want to have dinner. I don't know. Um, we like to open it up just like as if we were all celebrating together in person and you could walk up to the table and get her and design your book and say how amazing she is and how you met her or something you love about her or something she shared with you one time that changed your life. Whatever it is that's on your heart or your spirit that you feel like you want to unmute and share with Aaron right now, now is the time and you can just unmute and um, hop on in and say something to Aaron. She'd love to hear from you. <laughs> I can, so I'd like know. to say, oh, <laughs> go ahead. Lynn, Lynn, you want to go first? Okay, sure. So, um, I mean, you know, Erin, uh, it was so awesome to kind of be able to witness your transformation, you know, um, and just like, uh, obviously, she's been my guy for many years and she's, like her even just her presence has you know can be life-changing but like the way she the advice that she's given the 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 example that she's set you know like wweed what would Aaron do you know like um <laughs> that's why i do like well how would Aaron you know do this in a in the situation how, how how would she behave as a guy in this situation so i'm really grateful you know to have the opportunity obviously not just not as just at your initiate but also be able to work with you so closely and um that now you have a book that is kind of like you know even another legacy that is left behind with like the physical thing that can be you know physically given to people so I'm really grateful for that and it's already changed my life I share on Facebook so I'm not gonna share now but like it's already helping me shift through like quite a big block um both the book and Erin herself um as well yesterday so I'm excited it's gonna have a it's like having a mini Erin um <laughs> <laughs> no. but what's it what WWED okay good <laughs> so thank that you is so sweet and um Ling is the reason why you're seeing a lot of me okay I know it's a lot but we know some people miss some things that she's been promoting me as my assistant Am I the boss or is Ling the boss? That's the question, you know, <laughs> she's been putting me to work. Um, so that's why you see a lot of my face answering questions on, and it worked. I mean, look, we got bestseller by 11 a.m. I mean, come on. We didn't even have to do this, This you guys buying it now, um, which we also want to remember that, look at the, get the bar, the Barnes and Noble link is in the chat. Okay, anyway, next person. Sorry. So I'd just like to congratulate you, Erin. Um, this is so, so exciting. And one of the things that I just love about you is your authenticity. And I know that during one of my Kabbalah journeys, um, you stepped into a very difficult situation which su with such grace and, and beauty and goodness. And I was just so, so honored to see that part of you. So I can't wait to be able to read the book. I've heard so much about it from Heather and I, I'm just so, so excited. And I'm sure this is going to be a game changer for a lot of people. So thank you. Thank you for following spirit. Thank you for um, just putting yourself out there because I know it's not the easiest thing to do. And congratulations. 
Well, thanks for your inspiration. Um, yours, your book is what got me started, at least with this, uh, with O'Leary Publishing. So thank you. Uh, this is Todd. I'll go. Congratulations, Aaron. That's a huge deal to produce a book. You find me? Yes. Um, one of the things that I think about Aaron's I don't know, many, many high qualities is her integrity is immensely high. So to produce a physical work and um, like there's zero doubt in my head as to whether or not she'll hold integrity. There's a lot of content on the internet, a lot of content, books being produced here and there. And most of the time I pick them up, I'm a little bit dubious as to whether or not they'll actually, the author's integrity, it's actually going to be aligned. And um, I waited to order the book. Uh, so now it's out of stock. Um, but I'm looking forward to reading it. So congratulations again. Thanks. Yeah, Barnes and Noble. Yeah, Barnes and Noble. Let's give some Barnes and Noble some love. And leave the reviews there too, so that there's reviews everywhere. Congratulations, Erin. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're bringing um, this path to mainstream. And um, just reading this book, it's so magical. I was working through a block during that time, and I could have called you because you're a guide, and you're also my guide mentor. And so I could have gotten personal um, experience with you, but I decided just to read the book and kind of push through, and that helped me just to remove, remove the block. So I know if it worked for me, it can work for anyone. So I'm really happy that you're bringing this to the masses and it's going to be a bestseller on all the lists. I'm, I'm, I'm predicting it. <laughs> <laughs> you are psychic too. Um, yeah, no, I'm so glad I helped you when that's so cool that it would help you when, um, instead of calling, you know, I, you're always welcome to call, but that's, that's kind of cool too. To hear for sure. I want to go really quick. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Am I unmuted? Yeah. Yeah. You're cool. Yeah, I just want to say I coined calling you the leader of Shambhala, like whenever K for K was. And I just feel like this is another example of that, like leader of Shambhala. I feel like you've been blazing this trail, like holding the torch way ahead of so many of us being like, come on, guys, what are you waiting for? Magic is real. This is all amazing. Like, come on. And I just appreciate your, um, like somebody else said, your authenticity. You're such a unique individual and the way that you shine your light, like so many people are inspired by you. And so your book is just another representative or representation of that, of the unique way that you share your light, the way you share your keys. And uh, yeah, I'm just really proud of you, excited for you. I can't wait to get my copy and read it. I have the PDF, but I'm sorry, I was a little busy, but I did order my copy. I want the pictures. You've been selling me <laughs> on these pictures so hard. Like I can't wait to see these pictures, <laughs> uh, but congratulations. I'm always in your corner rooting for you, cheering for you. So, and thanks for all you do because you inspire so many of us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My hype person. <laughs> Points. Yeah, if I might. Aaron, go ahead. Yeah, if I might, uh, Aaron, I yes. met you, I think about three or four years ago. And yes. one of the, uh, one of your people said, I can't help you. You need to go to Aaron Wallace. So I showed up on your doorstep and I was concerned the way you looked at me. You're like, oh, we got some work here to do. You did several procedures, including soul cutting and the rest of it. And, and I'll just be brief. Reading your book, I've been on a journey for 73 years. And yes, I have a book on me and all that stuff. But I realized when I finished your book, you brought me to a point that I was able to forgive everyone that ever hurt me in my life. That is <clears throat> beyond anything I ever expected. But I picked up the book, I had to put it down. I picked it back up, I finished it. And like I said, and then I had a dream that night and I'm going like, oh my gosh, I've forgiven everyone. Whoa! So thank you, Vera. Congratulations, awesome. awesome. You guys an Amazon review? He has a nice uh, poetic review. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate you. Mom, want to go? Does Judy want to go? I see you're unmuted. Oh, I am happy to be here. It's lovely to see um, the, what, what has come to fruition and, and to, to meet some of the people that are in your life. And... And thank you for being you. Thanks, Mom, for 
Give yeah, it yeah. Birth. <laughs> I go for namaste. <laughs> and helping me find that one book and all everything else supporting me when I'm done kind of have a wacky path, like a, my own unique path. Yeah. And we don't have to put my dad on the spot. Dad, you don't have to, if you don't want to go. <laughs> and do you know, t- today today like is doing that. I don't want to put today is spot. national daughter's day. Did you know that Judy? <laughs> Just no, I didn't know. Here. I didn't know that. Enough. <laughs> yep. Today's daughter's uh, day. Yeah. Lynn can go ahead. You've got your hand raised. So Aaron, I, I met Aaron in Winnipeg, uh, going through the, my first time up the tree. And you were always there if I had any questions. Uh, you would, If I text you, message you, you immediately replied to me. And I was just so impressed because I know you live a busy life. And you just are a beaming light. And uh, I can't help but have a smile when I think of you. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. And I can't wait to get the book. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. I loved working with Winnipeg, the Winnipeg group and you. Yeah. Thank you. I was thinking about you guys a lot last weekend when I we did the crossing because you guys, your group was a group before. It was powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, right, do you want to go? Jamie. Hi. Congratulations, Erin. I love you so much. And um, I took a moment to think about, well, like what would I want to say? Because I know I don't compliment you very much and I really should more often, but I think you have a really brilliant way of um, like jamming up people's feedback loops. Like they're like in, they're in their loops and their patterns and you have a brilliant way of just redirecting. Um, and, you know, as a light worker, redirecting is everything. And you have a really brilliant way of doing that. Um, definitely for myself, and I don't know about other people, but you've definitely um, helped me tremendously in my profession simply by doing that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love working with you. Glad you're in my community. I got a call while that was hap- while you were talking, so I had to like it. Turn it off. And the person's like, hello, hello. Is that who's raising your hand? I can't quite tell from your, your name there. Maggie. Maggie. Hey, Maggie, it's you're up. You're on the hot seat. Hi. Congratulations, Aaron. I'm so happy for you. Man, this is amazing. And you being my Kabbalah teacher, this is the most badass TMR that I think could ever be produced. Um, I am just absolutely astounded more and more even now that I'm off the free of how amazing you are and just how much I admire you and the way that you carry yourself and the way that you carry yourself I, makes me always think about how I'm carrying myself as a divine feminine and I just want to thank you and I really love that wonderful moment that we had together on the tree where you and I were just dancing and I really saw the God in you and the God in me at the same time, um, I just want to thank you so much for everything you've done and doing and going to do. Yeah, well, yeah, it was so I loved dancing with you and that we have that selfie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, yeah, I'm so glad. Con- congratulations on uh, being a Kabbalist, too. Yeah. Thank you. And Jenny. Hi. Um, so something when Erin was sharing just a while ago about her book there was a trigger there already for me so I know this is going to be an awesome book for me so I'm and there, there's something about Erin that you know she's she, when she talks to me she's she's direct and clear so it really helped me get over you know like I walk away and I said I always think to myself oh yeah what, what, what was I so worried about like there was some it there's, there's there's something about the way she talks to me like the, that energy that comes in so so and I'm glad that you know this book it sounds like from the reviews it's it's going to be like that direct and clear for for everyone it's going to affect them trigger them whatever is going to help them grow so thank you thank you for that Erin yeah it's our triggers are we don't want we don't need to hide away from them we want to find them and then we we're freer thank you Jenny for me you want to go next Hi, congratulations, Erin. I'm so excited for you. Can't wait to can't wait to have a copy um to actually read it. And I I just have to thank you as well for being the, such a shining, amazing light in my life, especially uh 
when Ibsen Teresa left California, she Erin Wallace kind of like adopted adopted me and like helped helped me guide me in in my journey as well. So I'm I'm really grateful for that, and I really um, have you in my heart with a lot of love and the brief exchanges that we have had during killings to each other or readings to each other it was just amazing and i and i still have them in my heart and it's, it's just like i'm really grateful for all the support all the support that always uh you brought to all of us in california and in my transition now to florida uh now i'm putting a face together i just realized that i mean like what's happening with you <laughs> So this is amazing. Um, and I'm looking forward to create more of the light with not only Erin and Heather, but everyone here. So let's go with Team Light. I love you, Erin. Thank love you, everyone. You and um, yeah, that you you now have really cool people. Yeah, you guys get Romy. She's like a rock star. <laughs> so. <laughs> Robin, do you want to go? Thank you, Romy. Yes. Hi, Erin. Congratulations. Um, so I was like listening to everyone and I was just trying not to be over here crying tears of joy for you. <laughs> like just my heart opening and I'm so happy and proud one to be able to call you my friend and my guide. And um, it's going to be so great to see all the people that you're going to drop little seeds of nuggets of magic into their lives with this book. And, you know, I just love you so much and I always I love how connected I always feel to feel to you even though I'm never like near you rarely am I near you and um but anyway I'm just really happy for you and you know Heather for doing a really good job in April so thank, thank you, you for putting this out and making it amazing thank you love you Beautiful. Is there anyone else who wants to chime in before we end here at nine o'clock I would like to say something. This is Trevor here. And uh, just to hear what the little pieces, what you've shared tonight that are in the book and to know how many times I've heard you talk about triggers for it to actually be in a, in a tangible book for us to read and have with us to remind us to work through them constantly because they always come up and new ones come up every day. So it's really working through those. And I'm, I just, I love you so much. And I'm so excited for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Trevor. You can see Trevor and I's work um, where we sing the Peaches song from Mario. It's exceptional, exceptional talent. It's on my wall. I have my hair purple for you just for this book. <laughs> oh, Bowser. Bowser. Fan. <laughs> That's Peaches. We do a good job with that one, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We messed up on the Peaches part, but, you know, mistakes are part of it. Okay. Do it again in November. We'll get it. Osiris, <laughs> go. Go ahead, Osiris. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I just purchased a second copy on Barnes and Noble and they ship faster to me than Amazon. So if you want something fast, Barnes and Noble is a great place to go. <laughs> Mom, did you hear that? <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Fast is good. I have to buy my copy too. I want to buy some. I didn't even have to pad the sales with my own money. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like I really wanted to to get the best seller and I'm like I'm gonna hey if I messed up and didn't do it right I'm gonna go buy a bunch of copies <laughs> I didn't have to do that it's a real bestseller I did not that's some I honest right there. I, love it. <laughs> I bought one um kindle just to get the you know the re the juices rolling this morning yeah so Sandra oh. did you unmute do you want to go quickly who wanted to no, okay. I just was looking, scanning the room to see if there's anyone who had unmuted who I didn't give a chance to give you a shout out yet. Um, but I want to just thank each and every one of you for showing up tonight. It's a big deal for an author to launch a book. And can you imagine someone launching a book and having a Zoom book launch party and like nobody comes? How sad that would be. But how wonderful it is when we can get all these amazing people under one room to really shower the love on someone who really has poured so much love. It's obvious how much love she has poured into each and every one of you. Um, and so thank you for being open to coming on here and hearing about her journey as an author and just loving her and supporting her in this effort. And I would encourage you to leave a review on Barnes and Noble and on Amazon. I would encourage you to 
take a picture of yourself with the book when you get it and tag her. And, you know, word of mouth is still, despite social media and despite book talkers and all of that, word of mouth is the best way to grow um, a book up into the world. And so how it works is obviously you read a book and you love it and then you can't stop talking about it. And so that's why other people buy it. And so I think this book really has that word of mouth potential. And the more we can put those seeds out there and leave reviews and share copies with friends, um, the better it will be um, in the long run for this book because we're super excited it got number one today, but we want for it to maintain its momentum moving forward to help as many people as possible. So thank you, Erin, again, for trusting us. Be sure that you guys listen to the podcast. You're going to love what Erin shares on there. And um, Erin, is there anything you want to say before we close it out? I wanted to thank you and your team and uh, for helping me promote it. I really love the launch party, how you set that up. And I really loved our interview we did together. Um, the cover and the layout, all of it's phenomenal. And I'm really excited. And yeah, I mean, I think people can, like a lot of us are spiritual guides here on the call. And this might be a good thing to have on hand just to give your people, like Leah, um, I've been working with her for a long time. And um she's a guide and a, she's gone she's she's guiding others too now and she she said that the book was helpful to her so it will probably be helpful to your clients too so it's just an, another tool to have online and christmas is coming too but yeah i think it'll be fun to just kind of keep the momentum going and like so in a way yes we sold out and i wish we had more books to to keep it going but in a way it's going to be a nice ebb and flow so i'll be coming back in about a month and doing this, but thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Like April said, it would have been so sad if no one came on the, <laughs> on this part, but you guys all came through, like either bought a book, did a review or came to all three things. And I will not forget you. Thank you so much. And yes, yes Amazon will catch up on the sales. It won't be a month. I guarantee it'll be quicker than that. Arms and Noble still in stock. So that's great. Um, also, if you have a mystery school or you have a whole lot of clients, you can reach out to us. Um, Aaron has my email address. That says Heather, um, because we can direct wholesale um, bulk orders to any organizations or people that want to get that. So um, we can facilitate that for Aaron on her behalf. I think that's a really cool way to go about it too, Aaron, to empower people to be able to use the book, to help others. So thank you all for being wonderful and amazing and supportive and uh, a great part of this community here. Um, I wish the books much expedient um, flying to your mailboxes <laughs> as I possibly can. And um, Heather, thank you again so much for all you did to make this possible. Um, Absolutely. And uh, April, can I say one more thing? That you, I'm yeah. going to say one more thing that April- Everything you want. <laughs> The April always says this, and we haven't said it yet tonight, but I do want to say it for anyone who hasn't heard it. So basically, um, Aaron gave birth today to a new baby, right? So this is just the beginning, and now she's going to raise the baby. And we all get to help her raise the baby, and the way we do that is by sharing it, by telling people about it, right? So I like that because it's not done yet. This is just the beginning of the life of this book. So congratulations on giving birth, Aaron. Wow, I'm actually a mother in this lifetime. Cool. <laughs> Besides all the people that I guide. No, it felt like it because I felt really into it today. Like when I thought that maybe I had made some something, done something wrong. I was like, <gasps> you know, like I hurt the baby. Um, so the baby's but the baby's okay. It's alive and well. The baby beautiful well. baby, very beautiful. <laughs> the baby's okay. so thank you everyone so much. Um, thank you for purchasing. Thank you for sharing, leaving reviews and everything. And you know how to get in touch with Aaron and Aaron knows how to get in touch with me. And um, we're going to be here continuing to promote. And uh, her group, if you are in the Facebook launch group, will stay active. You can invite more people to join. We're going to rename it to Spiritual Shortcuts with Aaron Wallace. And she can she'll continue to share and post in there. And that group can continue to grow. So um, that's it. Yeah, that's a wrap. Thank you for why you know if you haven't bought it yet barnes and noble right now thank you love thank you all you Get it. bye I read all your comments too i tried to read your comments christina's yours is funny if you're still here <laughs>